Hey Nelson in London, England. This is Matthew with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera, I'm going to show you how I cut lenses for your Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfarer, color 789, which is the blue orange and the 52 eye size. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. This is all the original packaging, your Ray-Ban case, your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth, which is upside down. Let me turn that around for you, put it back inside your case. And this is color 789, which is the blue orange. It comes with a little plastic sleeve on the temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping. So you will get all the original manufacturer's packaging with that. Of course, it comes with a gradient lens. And I'm going to take these out and I'm going to cut prescription lenses for your prescription in there. Clear lenses with anti-glare coating. I'm tracing the frame in my Santanelli. This is the LE1000 Patternless Edger. It's a good, I'm tracing your Italian frame with my Italian machine. Here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You buy a genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame and receive free clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion. If you just want some geek chic look, my receipt has my federal ID tax number on there so you can get your money back from your insurance company or health savings account flex dollars, whatever you got if you just want something genuine and authentic and you don't even need glasses, then come on. So I'm gonna pull up the shape of your lens onto the computer. I'm gonna put in your pupillary distance of 66. Let me enter that value. These are polycarbonate lenses that I'm cutting for a Xyle frame, which is just an old school name for plastic. So let me go ahead and begin. You are minus two and a quarter from both eyes. So I'm gonna take one lens out of its protective sleeve, put it in my Marco 101 lensometer, spin the axis wheel to two and a quarter. Put that in, I'm gonna put a dot on the center of your lens. I'm gonna put an R on there for right. Let's do the same thing for your left lens. Of course, this could be left or right. It really doesn't matter since you're the same in both eyes. You are unique because eyes are muscular and as we age, every muscle in our body gets weaker and weaker and I'm right-handed. So my right arm is stronger than my left, but your eye muscles are completely equal where you're minus two and a quarter on both eyes. So this is a block, or as I like to call it, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I need a double-sided adhesive sticker and 3M out of Minnesota, don't you know? Okay, that's bad. Now, for those of you who are not from Minnesota, that is an awesome Swedish accent, okay? But they make a double-sided adhesive sticker and the black side is the sticky side. I'm gonna stick that onto the block, pull the tape away to make my side sticky. And what I'm looking into is just like the crosshairs of a scope. I have a vertical meridian and a horizontal one. And I wanna get that red dot dead center of those crosshairs. And of course I can't see it like you can through the camera. So I'm gonna use that. Let's do the same thing now for your other lens. Put that on there, hit the button. And there we are. So that's on there. Now the anti-glare coating that you have it's also a hydrophobic coating, meaning that it's a little bit more slippery around water. So I'm going to use another sticker on the back surface so this doesn't turn or rotate while it is cutting. Start with the left lens and pick up the right and let's hit the ground running. So I'm going to put your lens into the Chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I don't know the machine well enough to call it Chuck. But these calipers are going to come down and it's going to trace the shape of your right lens, starting with the rear surface, the concave surface first which is closest to your eyelashes, making sure the lens is large enough to fit into the frame with your pupillary distance, which it is. This is just a routine operation. It measures the back surface. Now it's moved over to trace the convex front surface of the lens, all the while measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly where to place the bevel so your lens fits best inside the frame. The actual cutting wheel is down here on the bottom left. That's gonna grind away your lens material and this wheel in the center with that channel, that's what's gonna put a valley the valley is what's going to cut the bevel onto the lens so it fits inside the frame. I will have to close the door in just a moment, but for now, I just want you to see as your lens touches down on the cutting wheel. Plus, I need to empty the sawdust from the last one I cut, which was a high index lens. So that is done. Now your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is also virtually unbreakable. They're bulletproof up to 22 caliber. I do this because my, my fingernail is the same equivalent of a 22 bullet. See how it stops that? But it also has both UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin. 
where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. This lens is also aspheric, meaning that it's not round. A spherical lens gives you that ugly round cosmetic fishbowl appearance when someone's looking at you, those big thick lenses. Aspheric just means it's much, much flatter. So these are thinner lens and then the curvature itself is much flatter as well, that front surface. Now the other nice thing is you have the anti-glare coating. Oop, your lens is done, almost, it was done cutting. Notice how it's flat all the way around the edges like a nickel. I could take it out or a pound, I should say, and set it on the counter. Now it's actually getting the bevel put onto the lens. And if you notice, there is water running in the background. That's just to collect dust. For the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle, these two water jets will kick in to wash away the debris that I keep picking off the lens. But polycarbonate cuts dry, where plastic and high-index plastic cut wet. But that anti-glare coating, it eliminates glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain, but from stoplights, street lights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights, it's a reflection-free lens. This lens in my right hand does not have that coating. You can see how the fluorescent lights reflect off of that. So when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their reflection in your eyes. And they see just your eyes, so it makes for much better eye contact. Plus, if someone takes a picture with a flash, you don't see the flash lit up. And actually, you might be able to see me, my reflection with the blinking dot from the GoPro camera on there where you won't see it in this one. So that's the other nice feature. Now the third feature, it comes with the best scratch coating in the business because it takes that anti-glare machine is a million dollars and takes 24 hours to apply that coating to your lens. Now you still have some rough edges left over from the cutting cycle, so I want to use my hand stone to smooth those out. And I can put my finger on the hand stone, but my finger gets warm due to the friction. But it's that friction to, that allows me to apply what's known as the safety bevel. And you see this white powdery substance that I'm scraping off? This is called Schwarf. And I do this so much, I have worn a V-shaped bevel into my thumbnail. My friends call it my occupational thumbnail. But once it has all been removed from your lens and it's on the counter, I carefully collect it into one pile and then I wipe it on the floor. Because this is where I say, kids, stay in school. I went to school for years to learn how to make a mess like that. So kids, if you want to grow up and make a mess, you gotta stay in school. So let's go ahead and get your lens mounted. I'm gonna tuck it in at the outside part of the frame and then using my thumbs, I push down at the nose and it snaps in perfectly. Let's go ahead and start cutting your left lens. I'm gonna flip this over to L, which stands for not left, and then hit the start button. I'm sorry, not right, not right. That's what L stands for. But just like before, the calipers are gonna come down, but this time they're gonna trace the shape of the left side of your frame onto the lens to make sure the lens is large enough. And then it's gonna trace the convex front surface of the lens. And because I wear this frame in 11 colors, you and I have the same size. I'm wearing the blue rubber today because of my blue shirt. But when this color came out, I went ahead and bought two blue-orange shirts so I could rock this. But your left lens, let me take my left lens out of my frame and mount it into yours to show you how true these sizes are. So that's that. Let me pop my lens back out so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to continue to work on your right lens. Let me tuck this lens back into my frame, clean it up. Of course, you're gonna get an orange cleaning cloth for me because of the orange frame. But every day I pop my lenses out and put them into a different color depending on what I'm wearing. But I'm gonna take this sticker off, it's no longer needed. Pull off this back surface sticker, dry your lens off, and I'm gonna put it into my lensometer where that red dot is, and I'm measuring minus two and a quarter. Now the unit of measurement we have in the optical world is called a diopter. And that's spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R. and goes in quarter increments starting at zero. You're at minus two and a quarter, which means you need nine steps of correction. For your myopia, you are nearsighted, meaning that you see great up close, but anything beyond fingertip reach starts to get blurry. So without your glasses on, everything is much too large than it really appears. When you put your lenses glasses on it will minify down to the correct size you see the size of the print there when I put your lens in front of it you can see how the letters get smaller so your lenses actually minify now you have no astigmatism correction which makes everything blurry that's why astigmatism causes sixes and eights or the letters P and F to look alike you only need lenses to actually get images to the correct size we have to bend the light 
so that everything is the correct size on the back of your retina. Now again, for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle, the water jets will kick in to wash away any optical debris, which, talk about great timing, and they say they never make you proud when you want them to, or these guys kicked in right when they were supposed to. And then as soon as your left lens is done, I'll do a final inspection and get these shipped out to you in jolly old England. In London town, I used to go to London every two years, one of my favorite cities on the planet. I got friends who live in Ealing Broadway, fly into Heathrow, get on the blue line, the third stop, which is what, Northfields, I think it is. And I would walk to their house, I believe Lovejoy Lane. I can never remember, it's something like that. You guys have such lovely names. Like when I saw a popsicle and they call them ice lollies, and I thought that was a funny word, but then you say, well, we have lollipops. What's the difference between lollipop and ice lolly, which is a frozen lollipop? And I was like, well, you know, good point, good point. You guys did invent the language, we just only butchered it for you. So, let me use my thumbnail again, my V-shaped thumbnail to scrape this off your lens. And once it's all off your lens onto the counter, I carefully collect it in one pile and then throw it on the floor. Kids, kids, stay in school. How many times I gotta tell you? So, I'm gonna tuck the lens in at the outside corner. Using my thumbs, I press down at the nose, it snaps in perfectly. Go ahead and take this block off. Come on off, come on off, there you go. Pull that sticker off. Now I'm gonna verify that this lens is a minus two and a quarter, and it is. Now your pupillary distance is 66. So I'm gonna place the zero against my thumb with my PD stick, not the inches, the millimeters. And when we look at it with the left lens, we're measuring 66 millimeters, so that is cut perfectly. Now, this is the time I like to take to remind everyone that when you get these in the mail, and, they're, and if they're too loose or too tight, or more than likely the realistic outcome is that one side is higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that's higher than the other. And because of that, that's why 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm no different. I'm part of that 80% and I'll show you in just a moment. But that's why glasses sit crooked on me when I try them on. But I'm going to get them in standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I have one ear that's higher than the other. So when I press down on mine, they definitely wobble, but they sit level on me. Now I flip them over, press down. There is no wobble. I make sure that each temple is overlaps perfectly, and they do in the same amount of tension on each hinge. Now, if anyone has any questions about what I can or can't do, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or simply click the Contact Me button on the website. Should you have any questions, because I've got some questions, this is one of Ray-Ban's little less-known frame. They don't even stock this in the U.S. They only keep it in their Italian warehouses, but this is the color of my local hometown baseball team, the Durham Bulls. Perhaps you've heard of them. There was a movie years ago starring Kevin Cosner and Susan Sarandon called Bull Durham. And these are the team's colors, so that's why I stock them. But not many people know about this frame. They do in my hometown because I wear this a lot when I rock my blue-orange shirts. But I have sold three of these frames this week, so I want to know what in the world is going on that's make this frame so popular, which is color 789 in the Ray-Ban catalog. So, because again, I could go... Very few people outside of my hometown buy this frame, so I've sold three in one week. So I'd let, someone please tell me what's going on with blue-orange all over the world. So I sold one to Mexico City. I sold one to, I forget where now, London. I think the other one was Toronto. So it's definitely something international going on. Someone please fill me in. But that's it. That's my, my question. So Nelson in London, I do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed watching me make prescription lenses for your Ray-Ban 2132 new Wayfair color 789 in the 52 eye size. And that everyone else got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.